drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by edupedia world previous lecture i introduced you to the concept of ttt diagrams today we will see something which is known as cct diagram if you remember correctly ttt diagram used to deal with isothermal condition you take the specimen at a particular temperature hold it at that temperature and see what are the phase changes with time okay but in cct diagram cct diagram stands for continuous cooling transformation continuous cooling transformation so as the name suggest here we are not treating the material isothermally rather we are continuously cooling the material so the temperature is continuously dropping what will be the effect on phase formation and the kinetics of phase formation when we are continuously cooling that is exactly what is represented by a cct diagram as i said it is unlike ttt diagram it is not under isothermal condition and let's see the diagram to understand it first this dotted lines shown over here is the ttt diagram curves so this is ttt representation now suppose that you had the uh, you held the material at let's say 650 degrees celsius isothermally you hit this curve you hit the finish curve of perlite and you got 100% perlite but now imagine that you are continuously cooling it continuously cooling the material thereby what is happening is that you are not giving it sufficient time at a particular temperature thereby diffusional processes will itself slow down relative to if it were maintained at a particular temperature okay and this effect of continuously cooling and continuously lowering the temperature is manifested by a change or shift in the curves for perlite formation to more time and lower temperature okay so what happens is the perlite formation perlite start and perlite finish will be shifted to higher time and lower temperature L why lower temperature because obviously since you are continuously cooling it does not have a sufficient amount of time at a particular temperature and diffusion will require further more time now thereby it needs to shift to higher time and since it is continuously cooling the temperature is continuously dropping thereby it has to have lower temperature also in the curve thereby what is happening is we get this new curves this is now the perlite start curve and this is the perlite finish curve this okay now in the case of cct curve i said that below 550 degree celsius below around 550 degree celsius we have benite formation but now suppose that you are continuously cooling the material and since this is a maxima region if you think about it this is called the nose of the ttt curve so corresponding to that we have the nose over here in the cct curve if you continuously cool it then there is no way you are going to hit the start line for the benite formation okay in this curve there is no way you are going to again hit the benite start curve therefore during continuous cooling you cannot form benite benite cannot be formed during continuous cooling benite can only be formed when you isothermally let the material stay at the benitic formation temperature continuous cooling at max will hit the nose and beyond that it won't strike the benite start curve it is physically impossible for benite to form during continuous cooling other than that in the perlite region in the perlitic region you hit the perlite start you hit the perlite finish during continuous cooling and the same phenomena like ttt occurs that is 
perlite starts forming over here 50% perlite forms here the median line and 100% perlite forms here right so this behavior is similar to CCT behavior the only difference uh, rather this behavior is similar to TTT behavior the only difference is there is a shifting in the curve now the amount of shifting can depend on how fast the cooling is right because if you are cooling it quite shallow then the shifting will be less if you cool it quite fast then the shifting can be quite high these curves in itself the CCT and TT curves this we have represented for iron carbon kind of system this was a eutectoid uh, system but in reality steel can have a lot of alloying elements right and each alloying element plays its own role in shifting the CCT as well as the TTT curves some alloying elements shift the curves to the right that is at lower time thereby they fasten the nucleation process and lets the perlitic formation finish at a quicker time some of the alloys shifts it to higher time thereby slowing the uh, nucleation process and shifting it to higher time zones higher time requirements so alloying for each alloy each different composition will have a specific CCT and a TTT curve the thing which we have discussed till now we have taken just one composition iron 0 0.76 carbon and iron uh, quite eutectoid 1.1 percent carbon or something like that and seen the behavior but there is a handbook of CCT diagrams and TTT diagrams full of this kind of diagrams with all type of combinations of alloying elements present and those diagrams are handy and available they are used and studied before deciding on what kind of alloying needs to be done for a particular property requirement what kind of heat treatment needs to be done on a particular kind of alloy system and these diagrams CCT and TTT diagrams have actually been made by carrying out a lot and lot uh, carrying out lot and lot of experimentations and those things are available so you need not worry about them but for the time being the take home was to make you understand the significance of CCT and TTT diagrams these discussions can extend for many lectures because they, they are in its themselves quite a large topic but I, I won't go into the details for the for now for this introductory course now in addition to the uh, perlite curves and the uh, shifted curves here we see some curves some lines drawn here m start m 50 percent m 90 percent m here represents martensite martensite we'll s visit this in the next lecture in much more details but just to give you a glimpse martensite is formed by diffusionless process martensite does not require diffusion to uh, be formed thereby martensite formation takes place at actually really really low temperature and martensite formation is called a thermal process it does not require time it since it is diffusionless process it occurs at the speed of at the velocity of sound it occurs instantaneously what actually decides the amount of martensite that will be formed is how cold we take it uh, low we take the temperature that will decide how much percentage of martensite will have a in a material we'll see this in much more details in the next lecture hopefully you understood uh, the idea about cct curves in this lecture and uh, with ttt and ct understood you will have a, a better idea about the kinetics and the effect of that on different phase formation. Till next class, have a great day. Goodbye.